correctly. That's there. Good morning, and if you have tuned in to uh, Pilgrim Congregational Church online devotional, uh, it will be beginning in a few seconds. Uh, I needed time to get everything put together. Uh, if you are tuning in or logging on through Zoom, that is up and running. Uh, and Facebook seems to be connected. Well, good morning and welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church Online Daily Devotional. I am John Olson. Uh, this past week we have been focusing in on a scriptural passage from the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47. This chapter in Acts of the Apostles is dealing with the very early Christian church in Jerusalem. There are several aspects of this passage that we've been considering, including the general nature or demeanor of those joining the church at that time and how they came together as a united community of faith. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the timing of all of this. This was just after the Pentecost celebration, one of the major feasts or celebrations surrounding the springtime harvesting of grains, resulting with a number of visitors coming into Jerusalem. As you may recall, when the early spirit descended upon the apostles, many people accused them of being drunk because of their babbling. Yet others were amazed that these apostle, apostles could speak in their language when they obviously had no reason to know that language. They were not babbling at all. It just depends on whether you can interpret what was being said. On that particular Pentecost Sunday, more than 3,000 converts were baptized, and day by day, more were joined to join the church as the Holy Spirit so moved them. In verse 46 we read, They attended the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. They partook of food with glad and generous hearts. It may seem obvious, however, I seriously doubt that any home in Jerusalem even the palace could not have a banquet hall large enough to have three or four thousand people sitting around sharing a meal together. More than likely, numerous much smaller groups of like-minded members joined together for this time of fellowship. It probably occurred just uh, as it does now. People seemed to form their own little groups, not to exclude others, but that there just is some sort of bond that gives them a closer sense. As part of the church community, we see that even here at Pilgrim Church, not everyone is involved with the side-by-side -side group, whether it was that group formed many years ago or the more recently reestablished group. There are various guilds within the women's auxiliary. We even see it within the sanctuary. People like to sit in a particular place because it feels comfortable to them. Dr. Linden asked us to move forward that we might have a closer feeling. That was a bit difficult for some and easier for others. Hopefully in the near future we can return to celebrating God in a communal worship with praise and song in the sanctuary, but probably we will have to spread ourselves apart and when we can join hands in fellowship may be a question that might not have an answer anytime soon. On Thursday, Dr. Horn talked about God's lack of distinguishing individuals based upon their social or monetary status or even how they looked. Each was accepted for their faith, and even then, probably not on the basis of certain level of faith, but that they believed in Jesus, who he was and his teachings presented during his earthly ministry, as well as the resurrection of the crucified Jesus. In the Hebrew tradition, and probably stemming from the nomadic necessity, hospitality was important. Sharing a meal, of which bread is a major component, 
was a symbol of fe fellowship. But it was also a time of being able to talk informally, to exchange ideas. The apostles could not have been in each of the houses every day to help guide the discussion of Christ's teaching, but I'm sure thoughts were exchanged and people communicated between each other, not just during those fellowship times, but among other Christians. I don't know how many of you have played the post office game. Years ago in elementary school, it was saved for a rainy day activity with all of us in the classroom sitting around in a circle and somehow someone would start this whispering message into the ear of the person, person sitting next to them. The message is passed along, whispered into each adjacent ear until it comes back to the beginning. Frequently, the message is substantially different at the end from what it was at the beginning. Dr. Horn made mention of how idyllic the, diff uh, the early church was. They had a commonality in their faith in Jesus. But the interpretation of his teachings may have caused some issues as time proceeded. We have to remember, they didn't have, or they did have a collection of writings, uh, many of which we have assembled together in uh, our Old Testament, but the New Testament had not been written at that time. For us in this time, we still have a need for a uniform understanding and interpretation of Christ's message. But we have a Bible that has the various writings assembled together, and fortunately for us, it has even been translated into a language we can read. This gives us a starting point. We have words. However, we still have the need to study those words to begin to understand Christ's message. Over the years, we may have evolved into different denominations, but it is still the same Jesus, it is the same God, and it's the same Holy Spirit. As we will see this next week, not everyone is accept accepting of change or differences. Some people misinterpret what they hear and too quickly become offended. It must have been very exciting to hear the message about Jesus Christ at that time and the new look on what life can mean when following the teachings of Jesus. But it also opens the door for power struggles within and without this newly established Jewish tradition we now call Christianity. Before we close with a prayer, I'd like to share with you an old song from 1625, which I think encapsulates our desires. It was written by John Cosin for the coronation service for King Charles I of England and entitled, Come Holy Ghost, Our Souls Inspire. Come Holy Ghost, Our Souls Inspire, Enlighten with Celestial Fire. Thou the Anointed Spirit art, who dost thy sevenfold gifts impart. Thy blessed unction from above is comfort, life, and fire of love. Enable with perpetual light the dullness of our blinded sight. Anoint and cheer our soiled face with the abundance of thy grace. Keep far our foes, give peace at home. Where thou art, guide, no ill can come. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and Thee of both to be but one, that through the ages all along this may be our endless song. Praise to Thy eternal merit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, in whom we know the power of redemption, You stand among us in the shadows of our time. As we move through our daily life, uphold us with the knowledge of that final morning when, in the glorious presence of your risen Son, we too will share in his resurrection, redeemed and restored to the fullness of life, and forever freed to be your people. Amen. Again, thank you for logging on to our daily devotional. I am John Olson for Pilgrim Congregational Church in Pomona, California. Please join us again at 9 o'clock on Monday through Saturdays and our Sunday worship service at 10 o'clock led by our senior minister, Dr. Patrick Horn. Have a blessed day.
Goodbye.